let's give this a shot. What question is Locke trying to answer? And what is his answer? Now, we, we've changed to tactics, okay? So from the pre-Socratics, uh, we were dealing with the question, what does it mean to exist? Uh, the Sophists, at least the Semicus, uh, excuse me, at least the Protagoras or Gorgias, were asking this question about the nature of truth. What does it mean to be you know, true? Uh, we switch very briefly over then uh, to Descartes and Russell when we deal with skepticism, and uh, they were trying to deal with knowledge, at least in a very limited extent. <clears throat> when we get back to Plato and Aristotle, they're both dealing primarily with metaphysics. You know, what does it mean to exist? Now, the answers up to this point have been very unsatisfying uh, you know, for <laughs> us involved and pretty much for everybody at large, right? You have uh, the pre-Socratics with all their disagreement. You have Plato talking about being, but then you can't define being. You just have to know being by contemplating being. And that's not a, you know, very helpful. Then you have Aristotle who says what it means to exist is to be a composite of form and matter. But then, by the way, since neither form nor matter are substance, they don't actually exist. So you have what's real being composed of what's not real. Uh, it has some very unsatisfying approaches up to this point, and people get really, really tired of this. Now, what Locke is doing is saying he, he's kind of had enough of this, right? Enough of this trying to give an account of existence by appealing to some kind of weird knowledge, right? So he's going to take a step back, or at least he, you know, at least tries to question, well, then how do we know about what's real? So he switched questions. He switched from what does it mean to exist to what's knowledge? What is knowledge? Yeah. Now his answer to this, answer, this question, what is knowledge, uh, are ideas. Right? Ideas are the, you know, is the only thing that we know. If it's not an idea, then we don't know it. Well, then we can very quickly ask, well, then what's an idea? Right? Or at least what's the, the source of all ideas? Right? Now, all the ideas are happening up here, but where do they come from? What's the source of all ideas? And according to Locke, the source of idea, ideas is experience. So the problem that Locke has with everything that Plato and Aristotle have done, and we haven't even looked at these, these other folks, uh, is how they uh, are trying to account for their knowledge. You know, where is the source of their knowledge? For both Plato and Aristotle, they both have some kind of non-empirical account of knowledge. At least it's some, some of the sources of their knowledge is not empirical. And for Plato, it's this recollection of the forms that you had prior to your physical birth. For Aristotle, it's this uh, recognition, but it doesn't really go into what that is. Somehow the form of the object is transmitted to your brain. Right? <laughs> um, and it's never a very uh, satisfactory uh, account of knowledge because it's always non-empirical. Uh, instead, Locke says, forget about these non-empirical accounts of knowledge. Forget rationalism, because that's only going to lead you down a crazy train. Forget rationalism. Instead, we're going to say all knowledge is empirical. All knowledge comes from experience. So the source of all ideas for Locke uh, is experience. Okay? Is experience. And there's two kinds. He's got two kinds of experiences, sensation and reflection. Sensation, this is what you get from your five senses. Yeah. For your eyes, your ears, your skin, right, your nose, okay. what you see, what you smell, what you taste, what you hear, what you touch. That's the source. That's uh, sensation. All right. This is the raw data that you're dealing with. Okay. If it doesn't at least start, right? If your knowledge of the outside world doesn't at least start with sensation, you've got a big problem. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, the, that's one kind of experience of sensation. The other kind is reflection. Sensation is what you experience from the outside. Yeah. Reflection is what you experience on the inside, inside your head. So it's how you think and how you react and what you, uh, you know, how you deal with this uh, uh, sensation, with all these sensations. What do you cognize with these sensations? So here's what Locke's trying to do. He's trying, he's trying to answer the question, what's knowledge? How do I know? He's not really dealing with metaphysics. He deals with just a little tiny bit, 
And he gives a little tiny bit of an account of what it means to exist, but not very much. He's dealing primarily with knowledge. All knowledge are, is an idea, right? Our ideas. The source of all ideas is experience. The two kinds of experiences we have are sensation and reflection. Sensation is what we experience from the outside. Reflection is what we experience from the inside. And he's rejecting rationalism. Rationalism is the claim that there's some kind of non-empirical, non-experiential 